mining has always played a crucial role in the development of human civilizations. For centuries, the success of gathering the necessary raw materials relied on basic tools and sole manpower. Nowadays, in most of the mines, we can find less people and more machines. But there are mines where exploitation is considered as uneconomical due to the small size of the deposits or the difficulty to access them. Several European research institutes formed an alliance to overcome this problem. They are developing an autonomous mining robot, which would be able to extract small and hard-to-reach deposits with minimal impact on the surface. Finnish robotic engineers are testing a simple robot with an odd spiral instead of wheels. The so-called Archimedes screw is an unconventional solution for propulsion, but it's known to work on all terrains – in mud, in water and even underground. Looks good, but how do we get a proper robot at the end? To find the answer, we need to visit researchers all around Europe. Our first stop is at the Polytechnic University of Madrid, more precisely, the Center for Automation and Robotics. This model was built to test ideas that can be used for the real-size prototype. There are many things to be learned. How to drive the screws, how modules can automatically connect, or what kind of drilling head should be used. Right next door, programmers are working on the artificial intelligence-based software for autonomous navigation and situational awareness. The final robot should be able to work entirely on its own, making decisions without human supervision. The team is making the final adjustments to get the robot ready for a more spacious test site. It seems like the systems are working fine. It's time to move forward and find some real challenging terrain. This bigger model was built in Tallinn, Estonia, and right now it is tested in Belgium together with local geologists. On the bottom of this robot, we can see some unusual sensors, the so-called whiskers. But what do they do? How do they work? And where do they come from? Human inventions often mimics nature. It is called bio-inspiration. Millions of years of evolution means millions of ideas. Even better, through the filter of natural selection, only the good ideas survived. Here at the Center of Biorobotics at the Tallinn University of Technology, the ideas to be harvested are ranging from different propulsion systems to sophisticated sensors. Based on the perception of the flow-sensing lateral line organ found in fish, the team has successfully developed a flow meter device. The sensor detects the direction and the velocity of the water by registering the tilt of the mast. But they did not stop here. The concept can also be used to build artificial whiskers. By mounting many whiskers on a robot and analyzing all their movements collectively, a 3D model of the terrain can be built. The model works like a map for autonomous navigation. This abandoned mine in Belgium is a perfect place to test the abilities of the whiskers and other custom-designed sensors. This is crucial, as conventional devices would not work in the extreme environment the mining robot is being developed for. The robot has to gather geophysical information to be able to follow deposits. The electrical resistivity tomography method seems like a good option. Normally, many electrodes are placed meters apart to get good results. 
But in this case, the method needs to be adjusted to match the size of the robot. This means testing different electrode densities, mountings, and algorithms. In addition to the geophysical data, geological information is also needed. The blinking device on the front is a spectrometer which can detect different minerals. These are all delicate sensors, but at the end we are talking about a heavy-duty mining machine. The members of the Mechatronic Research Group of Tampere University, Finland, are experts on building novel machines. They are responsible for constructing the RM1, the real-size robo-miner. Their focus right now is on the propulsion system and how the necessary force for a mining machine can be created and controlled. It's still a model, but some of the solutions, for instance, the elements of the hydraulic system, are to be used in the final version as well. It's still a long way until we can meet the first autonomous robo-miner. The models were working fine, so it was time to elaborate the concept. Mežica mine in Slovenia is a perfect site to test the geoscientific instruments. Laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, or LIBS for short, is an analytical method where focused laser is used to create plasma on the targeted surface. The wavelengths and intensities of the emitted light show the element composition of the targeted material. This instrument, which is created by the RoboMiner's team, is not just capable of telling the element composition of a given point, but it can scan a defined area with rapid measurements, creating an element map. As we can see, the results are nicely reflecting the pattern on the wall. The LIBS can only detect what is on the surface, but there are devices that can see through walls. The electrical resistivity tomography can tell the subsurface boundaries of minerals by measuring electrical resistivity changes. The depth of detection depends on the distance between the electrodes. Conventionally, the electrodes are meters apart, but to guide the drilling head, better resolution is needed while shallow detection is acceptable. The results refer to the changes in mineral composition inside the wall. So basically, the robots will know how to follow deposits. But it's equally important to be able to monitor the quality of the mined minerals. At the laboratory of Kutek in Germany, members of the RoboMiners team are working hard to find the solution. The mined material will be transported to the surface mixed with water as a slurry. As we have seen, LIBS is a fast enough method to be used for continuous monitoring. But there is a problem. Slurries are notoriously not transparent, and a transparent space is needed for focusing the laser and detect the emitted light. As we can see, the LIBS is working fine on the surface of the slurry. The solution is to create an air chamber with a glass window in the pipe that carries the slurry. Thanks to 3D printing, it's easy to test different ideas. The perfect air chamber is hard to create, as its window has to remain clean and the level of the fast-running slurry needs to be constant so the laser can hit it. All right, let's try this. Finally, everybody thinks they found the right setup. It's time to give it a try. The system is running, the level is fine, and the window remains clean enough. It's a laboratory experiment, so they add salt to the circulating slurry to be detected by the lips. The peaks on the screen show that the idea is working, at least in the laboratory. But mining is messy, so final tests are to be carried out in a realistic environment. In our case, it's the Kunda mine in Estonia. 
So far, we've only seen different devices which are needed to construct the robot, but not the actual prototype. Meet the RM1. In the RM1, all movements are powered by water. The hydraulic system drives the Archimedes screw, spins the drilling head and moves the working cylinders. The coordination of the movements is controlled by computers via numerous electric valves. To be able to precisely drive this robot and to create enough force where it's needed, the water pressure has to be regulated in each hose and each cylinder of this sophisticated machine. The RM1 easily reaches the right position for the very first drilling. The drilling tool has been developed specifically by the Robo Miners team. Looks effective, but the excavated material needs to be transported to the surface. Since the robot is designed to work under water, the easiest solution is to use water for transportation. The pump for this system also works with water. It's a so-called Venturi pump, where high-pressure water is injected to a suction head to carry the slurry. The pipe delivers the slurry to the monitoring unit where the LIBS can directly analyze its composition. Whenever the laser hits the surface of the slurry in the pipe, we can see the unique waveforms of all the elements it contains. All the systems work fine, so the Robo Miners team successfully proved their concept is viable. Computer simulations demonstrate how the robotic miner would operate. It's still a long time until mining robots like the ones they've created took over the hard work in the industry. But these results are guiding us towards the future of mining.